While recording of this presentation is allowed, we do ask that your camera or streaming device remain at or below shoulder level, not blocking the view of anyone behind you. Thank you for your cooperation and for being considerate of those around you. Enjoy the show. Yeah! Back from the dead and straight from the mausoleum, please won't you welcome the afterlife of the party, the most affordable entertainer in his price range. Let's hear it for the superintendent of screams and the executive of fright, the late Monty Revolta. obligations to have you all raise up in your seats and join me in the official anthem of LA Haunted Hayride and Midnight Falls. That means get up you dummies. Trick or treat, ah, trick or treat, door to door for treats to eat. Darkness comes when autumn falls in the town of midnight falls midnight falls oh midnight falls in the town of midnight falls a town that's cursed from bad to worst in the town of midnight I'll see you in the spa. Alright, stop it! Turn off that shit! Welcome to Midsummer Scream. We are excited to be joined by a few of the creative masterminds behind 13th Floor Entertainment Group, the owner-operator of 17 large-scale attractions that haunt the nation each Halloween, including some of your favorite events right here in the Southland. Today, they will discuss the innovation behind their cutting-edge designs, intricate mazes, and the narratives that keep fans returning year after year. As summer starts to fade away and the spooky season looms large, it's time to find out what this sinister crew has in store for all of us. Please, welcome to the stage. The creator of Delusion and director of immersive entertainment for 13th Floor, John Braver. Yes. 
the creator of the Los Angeles Haunted Hayride and producer at 13th Floor, Melissa Carbone. Regional manager for 13th Floor, Amy Holloman. Vice President of Operations for 13th Floor, Greg Salyers. CEO and founding partner of 13th Floor, Christopher Stafford. And your moderator for this presentation, from Ash vs. Evil Dead, actress Dana DeLorenzo. Hi guys, how's everyone doing? How great is Midsummer Scream? You guys having a good weekend? Right. Well, it's about to get even better as long as nothing gets possessed and jumps on stage, which has been known to happen with a few of us. In fact, some of these people, if not all, are very good friends with ghosts and ghouls and all the things we love. So I'm so excited to uh, reveal this information to you because, you know, we love to hear what's coming up every year. We all know and love it. That's why we're all here with the uh, 13th Floor Entertainment Group. And, I don't know, there may be a surprise in it or two. Um, do you know, who doesn't love a surprise? So, um, uh, I'm excited to be here and to talk about all the things going on for Southern California uh, Halloween. Oh, also, uh, I do tend to scream the closer I get to a microphone, so sorry in advance. I'll try and not, not talk as much and loudly. Um, so, uh, we're all here because we've been to one of the events or hopefully uh, can come for the first time. Um, we know and love it. It's, it's developed quite a name in Southern California. So, Chris, how has the 13th floor changed over the years and, and you know, what, what has, has it been going on recently and what we're preparing for? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's changed uh, crazy over the last, uh, I don't know how long I've been doing this now, but uh, started out like much of the people in this room just as a, a haunt Halloween fan. Got invited to go work at my first haunted house when I was 15 years old and fell in love with it. And uh, always thought about what would it be like if I did my own haunted house one day. And so in 2002, I actually opened our first haunted house with my business partner who, who we met working as 15 year old kids at that haunted house. Opened our first haunted house then. 2008, we opened the original 13th floor haunted house in Denver, Colorado. And then in 2009, we met a couple of guys from Austin, Texas that had done a haunted house called the House of Torment. And we brought our businesses together. In 2010, we opened 13th Floor San Antonio. And that was kind of our, our that was kind of the genesis of the 13th Floor Entertainment Group, right? Bringing those two companies together and starting to grow the business. Since then, we've been opening new shows, acquiring shows. Uh, the company this year will operate 32 different attractions across the country. Wow, yes. Yeah, That's thank a you. lot of work. So a lot of them are, are centered in the Halloween space, so haunted houses, Halloween festivals, but some of them are also room escapes, axe throwing, and then we just opened our first immersive art installation in a joint venture with Otherworld, it's called Otherworld Philadelphia. Um, it's a pretty incredible location. But uh, yeah, and it wouldn't be possible without all the people sitting on stage here today and a lot of the folks that are in the audience uh, watching us today. So. Pretty excited to reveal to you guys a lot of secrets about what we've been working on and what all these folks have been working on. Um, but before we do that, I think we're gonna hop back and take a look at a video, just a recap of what we did in 2023. Great. Are you guys excited? Look at that. And that was 
about last year. So now we're gonna get into what's to come. And I think we have to jump into probably the most unique event to start off the events. Um, I, it's also known, I'm sure, as you all agree, as the vanguard of interactive horror theater. I think you know and you love it. It's a little world called Delusion. Yeah. And I'd love to talk to John Braver, everybody, the creator of Delusion. So, John, for anyone who hasn't experienced Delusion, can you just kind of describe the concept? Yes, I, uh, how many people have been to Delusion? Yeah. Okay, that was loud, that's good. And there were a lot of people that haven't, so for all of you, I kind of want to give a quick explanation. It's basically the most cinematic experience you can have in the live setting. So that's, I come from the film world, we kind of brought that into the live, the live world. And uh, to give you a bit of a taste of that, uh, and some of the characters and the stories, um, just want to throw up a little video here for you guys to enjoy, so check it out. Delusion is the best time you're going to have this holiday season. Very scary, very intimidating off the bat. I just felt like someone was always behind me the entire time. It was super creepy and very intense. You gotta come check it out. It's awesome. Oh my lord, I don't think we should play that again. <laughs> That's so quick. But you got a little taste of it. You can kind of see some of the characters over the years here. So it's, it's very much uh, like living inside of a, of a creepy, hauntingly beautiful story. And uh, we've been doing it since 2011. And it's, there's really not much like it. It's a in very intimate experience. Um, we try to make sure that people feel they have some agency and they're a part of the story. Obviously, our trademark player part, we really take that seriously. So. Uh, I've been just doing this for a long time and, and get swallowed back into this every year. Um, and we'll kind of dig into this year's show a little bit later. Well, and, and since you've been doing it since 2011, um, and like you said, every year it's a different story. So that's a lot of storylines to come up with. So how, how would you describe that process of coming up with something new every year, trying to top the last year? Well, I think... If I go into it every year thinking trying to top it, I can you know, set yourself up for, <laughs> for disaster. But basically, storylines come in, in various ways um, through gummies, through, uh, <laughs> through dreams, through uh, various interactions I'll have with someone on the street. Uh, they, they're all standalone stories, pretty much. Uh, so you could go to any one of them. But, there's a delusion universe. We have over, now at this point, probably about 50 characters, 50 original characters. Um, and we've done it since 2011, so there's been nine stories. And it's pretty expansive at this point. So uh, I think coming up with them, it depends on also the venue. Obviously, you've been some, a lot of you have been to the shows. You've been to some of these really unique and special venues that we've acquired. Uh, not so much acquired, but rented. We'd love to acquire them. <laughs> so, uh, but that plays a big part in the telling of the story as well, too. I'll, for example, the Phillips Mansion, we've been there for the last three years, uh, out in Pomona, and that's a very special place. So I remember the first time I saw it, I would just stand there and just stare at it for a little bit and see what comes my way. And just feel the space and walk around. And um, to, to go through a process, it, it's hard for me to explain it so much, but uh, I explained it with the gummy part. But basically, <laughs> it's, it's a, it's, it's really fun because it's fun and it's frustrating at the same time, to be honest, because obviously we do 10 to 12 people every 10 minutes or so. That's been our format. So it's, 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 been, a little, it's been difficult to try to tell a compelling story with that kind of format, um, but we've been able to do it for many years now and I've been very proud of it. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's exciting. Most of the time I spend, I spend about two or three days at the venue. I'll sit there and I'll maybe sleep there sometimes and just walk around and feel the space, feel the flow of it as well too. That's most important to make sure the audience doesn't sort of backtrack into other groups. So I'll get the flow down. And then uh, the rest of the time I'm in front of my computer in a very crouched, annoying position like this for, for a couple months. Uh, that's where I'm at right now with, with this current story. So uh, I should probably change my posture here. <laughs> uh, so anyway, it's, there's a lot, a lot more to tell about that, but that's, that's kind of the, the gist of it. Okay, and so, and I don't want to pry too much, but so you... Pry. you okay, I won't pry. Um, so 
last year we saw a culmination of all of the delusion storylines, right? So can you maybe tell us what era or world that uh, delusion will be taking us to this year? Yeah, so this will be interesting. Those of you who went to the show last year, did you see anything at the very end of the show? Yes, I Any did. Any little a book, Easter egg? A book, a new a book. book. What? Okay. A new story. Lots of what? Lots of hate. Gummies. Somebody said the blood right. <laughs> Gummies. Hey, you got one? Um, somebody said the blood, the blood right back there, and there's the book. Okay, so at the end of the story last year, we had the delusion sort of compendium, toss it into the furnace, burns, and then we're outside and we hear the epilogue kind of uh, wrapping everything up. If you might have missed it, and a lot of people did, I just snuck it in there as a fun thing and see if anybody would notice, but one page uh, lingered. Outside of the, the outside of the carriage house, there's a window and it's sort of sticking outside of the window. I saw it. <laughs> so that was um, called original, a show from 2012 called The Blood Right. And that's, that's the era I'm revisiting. I'm bringing back sort of a storyline and some characters from that story, from that, um, that show. So that was, if you saw that, then that's kind of the, the continuation of this, to go back into some of the old stories. But this is really, this show is, as I'm writing it, it's becoming a wholly new show with some of the uh, beloved characters from back then. Did anybody actually see that show from 2012? Wow, you guys are OG. Come up here, I want to shake your hand when we're done. <laughs> and um, can you reveal maybe the title of this year's delusion show? Yes. I, Do we you're the best storyteller. I want you to say it. No, no. You're the best story writer, John. Oh, okay, I'll tell you, I'll tell you the title and then you... Like, <laughs> Delusion. The Red Castle. Yeah. Hey, there it is. Check it out. Illusion the Red Castle, and you can kind of take a moment and read about the, the storyline from this year. It's, it's, a, it's a lot about love and sorrow. It's a, it's a, a character named... Uh, if those who came to the show in 2012, do you even remember the name of the protagonist? This is this other stuff, forget it. It's called... Dr. <laughs> Do Lowell. Dr. Lowell, that's right. Someone Dr. bring that person a prize. That's right. Gummy, gummy. Hey, we got a theme going for this panel. Okay. 13th Florida team group does not endorse what <laughs> Not a guarantee. Uh, so, <laughs> the storyline basically is like he, he, he lost his wife. <laughs> wow, what a transition. Um, <laughs> lost his wife, and like, how far would you go to sort of bring this, this loved one back, and would they even want to be brought back to this world? So, we're playing into that and having the audience be key players, key patients of Dr. Lowell in this story, and uh, how they're gonna help him either bring his wife back or not. And so at the last three years, it was at the Phillips Mansion, right? The last three years yeah. of the, the setting. So if we are, if it's called the Red Castle, can you tell us where Delusion is gonna move to this year? Yeah, that is actually the venue you're looking at right there. Wow. So this, uh, I don't know if anybody's known, I, I didn't, I've lived in LA for a long time, I didn't know this place existed, but it's called the Stimson House. And it is, uh, thankfully, in LA proper. It's, <laughs> it's near USC, uh, near the 110 and the 10 interchange. Um, and it's, yeah, it's very close to a lot of people, but it's this really cool clandestine kind of castle that exists uh, right next to a church, so we'll be sure to defy all of that. Um, <laughs> But it's, it's unreal. I mean, you see it right here. Obviously, if you're standing in front of it, you'll be blown away. So yeah, the Stimson House uh, near USC, and uh, we'll be, that is, I mean, that is the Red Castle. This, is, this was actually owned by an old uh, lumber magnet. Um, I forgot his name exactly, but it's, you know, these crimson bricks, and uh, it's got this, obviously, cool nook, this tower you can see over there as well, too. So we're, we're gonna occupy that space and put on, uh, Quite an unreal show. This thing is turning out to be incredibly fun. I'm really excited for that. Yeah, wow. that's great. Well, who's not excited to go to a castle? Um, and so just uh, one last question, John. So in the past, um, you know, because you've had different locations, 
What can you give a little bit about since now we have this location that you're doing it? What is the experience like when what can people expect with the experience when they walk in to this one? Well, as you kind of allude to what I, what I talked about earlier about being patients of this of this um, psychiatrist, Dr. Frederick Lowell. And again, going back to a question earlier about the era, we're in the late 40s, early 50s kind of era. So he took over this place um, and made it his sort of, again, clandestine asylum. So it's, we're, we're, we're leaning into the idea of sort of this research, I don't want to say facility, because it's supposed to be private, as I said, clandestine and, and secret. So you're going to be sort of readmitted into this place that you've existed for a little while, but your memory of it has kind of faded. And so you'll be sort of re reintroduced in some interesting way to, to old characters. Um, so you'll, you'll feel as if you're being, I mean, the idea is to feel as if you're, you've gone mad, for sure. So that's, that's the idea, that's the experience. But um, we're, we're testing this out, and this has always been an interesting part of Delusion in the past. And uh, I've always put a lot of trust into the audience. But for this one, I want to go back to that idea that the audience has these certain abilities to be able to manipulate things. And so you have um, these dormant abilities in your mind, and the doctor's been kind of working on that for a while to help resurrect his wife. So you're going to feel as if you're, you're a patient. I would, I would su suggest everybody goes and re-watches Shutter Island, because that is a big inspiration for this story. Thank you for all of those little tidbits. I'm very excited about this. And uh, yes, let's give it up for John Raymer and Delusion, we can't wait. And so we're gonna just transition here from the dark and deep of Delusion to the magical and beautiful and delightful magic of the jack-o'-lanterns. So, Amy, can you just tell us a little bit about this event for anyone who hasn't been or may have missed it last year? I would love to. Thank you, Amy. Magic of the Jack-O-Lanterns is a Halloween event located in Whittier Narrows. Nestled between two bodies of water is a delightful trail flanked with thousands of hand-carved pumpkins. Some of these pumpkins are placed on the ground and some are interconnected into larger than life displays. What I love about this event is it has that feeling of like on a crisp fall evening that you're going to something that's, it's like vintage Halloween, but at the same time, we incorporate a new wave of technology. So I think it dazzles all guests who attend. I agree. and. How long is, how do I say, how as long is the trail or how long can people expect to be there when they attend? I would say to expect to plan at least an hour, but um, you're gonna hear me talking about in addition to the walking trail, there's some activities. So you can come and make a whole night of it. Or if you're someone who likes to bounce from one Halloween event to another, like start with delusion and end with something a little softer, you could come and make sure you get through the event in an hour. Great. And um, who is this geared towards, uh, demographic-wise? It's a great question. Um, I think magic is, is perfect for actually for all ages. Um, there's something for everybody, whether it's from a date night, which it would be a very romantic suggestion for you guys out there. Um, from a date night to a group of teenagers who want to do something fun to family family favorites. There's nothing startling, you know, but it's something that people like all the time. And if you, even if you get creative like John with whatever gummies he was talking about, you still would <laughs> probably find this event extremely magical. But it's really... Um, it's, there's something for everybody in magic. Well, no gummies, but there is alcohol that helps. We do not provide that. <laughs> and so, this is the second year, correct, of, of, of Magic of the jack o -Lanterns. And um, what, are there any changes or updates that we should know about for this year? Oh yeah. Uh, for this year, like I said, in addition to walking through the trail and seeing all of the displays, we are going to also have um, some fun inflatable pumpkin uh, themed activities from a gigantic slide to obstacle courses, both for adults and children. And then there's the pumpkin bounce pad, 
which you can bounce on it, you can chill on it, everybody has a great time. Uh, we also have, uh, we started a s'mores experience last year, prototyping this at this event, and we found it was so popular, but we wanted to make it even better this year. So you can get, sure, we can sell you s'mores, but Greg and the team have been planning on how to make this really an experience where you're sitting around with, you know, campfire together, which I think is awesome. And uh, in addition to that, we, like I mentioned earlier, a new wave of technology. I'm going to let someone else tell you all about the technical components of that, but we're pretty excited for uh, the advances that we're making in the show this year. Wonderful. And you just uh, touched upon it. I was just going to ask that, um, ask you, Greg, there's one new surprise uh, this year at Magic of the Jack o' Lanterns. There is. We didn't ask. How many people went to Magic last year? <laughs> That's fantastic. So, if you've been or if you haven't been, magic is, it's beautiful. I mean, there's just no other way to put it. There's 7,000 pumpkins and pumpkin boards and a lot of different things going going on. But last year we had one particular feature that we put in. It was 500 little pumpkins around a corner that were all synced up to music and dancing. And it was, without a doubt, the most popular part of the show. And so, we're sitting there one night looking at the crowd, looking at the grid. And we're like, why don't we do this to the entire show? So every single pumpkin and board and every other feature in the entire show is going to be dancing to the music. And then every half hour, we're going to take that and we're going to have a park-wide show. So it's did a little vignettes with their own little show. Every half hour, the entire park is going to be one giant show. Wow. And I'll add one thing that's cool that we are bringing back this year is some of those songs are by our friends Lovecraft, who I think you guys like Lovecraft, right? Uh, make awesome spooky Halloween music. So we're really excited to be partnering with them again. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring on our technical director, Polly, who actually made all of this happen. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, hi. Um, is it Polly or is it Kip? It's Kip. Thank you. It's Pam yeah. for, for, for correcting him. He's old and forgets. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so like Greg said, we really looked at the event last year and at our pumpkin grid in particular, and we saw our guests really um, responding to it positively. They, they enjoyed it. They, they stood around and watched it. Um, it. It had a few different sequences it would run. <clears throat> and so we spent the off season really uh, considering, you know, what does it look like to integrate that technology, it's uh, addressable LED technology throughout the entire event. And so we've replaced not only every light in every pumpkin, but also our, our ambient lighting that lights the trees and everything. All of this is now uh, addressable LED technology, which allows us to control both the brightness and the color uh, of every light in the event. And we kind of have two modes that, that customers will be able to enjoy when they come. The first is um, just kind of an ambient mode, where the show looks a lot like uh, it did last year, if you went. Um, it's pretty, and it's lit up, and it's nice, but even there, there's some new uh, kind of magic, right? To magic of the jack and later. Um, the pumpkins on the ground will, uh, you know, flicker a bit, like they're lit by fire, or maybe they're, they'll twinkle or change color, or things like this. Um, but what we're really excited about is, is kind of show mode, um, where every half an hour, uh, every light in the entire event goes out and then comes back up um, playing an event-wide show synchronized to music, um, something that we think is gonna be a really unique and exciting experience, something that our guests uh, have never seen before, something we've just never been able to bring them before um, without this technology. Um, and if you haven't yet, uh, please stop by our booth in the Hall of Shadows. You can see sort of a small version of, of what we imagine this looks like, again, with some great Lovecraft music. Um, and then this season, please come out and see the, uh, the entire event in Whittier and Ayers. Fantastic. Uh, and we did, Greg mentioned it briefly, but there, we do also have food and themed beverages, both alcoholic and sober at this event. So I think if you come and you catch the tail end of show mode, um, grab a drink, stick around, so you can see it go through the whole sequence again. And there are there are multiple shows, so throughout your stay at the event, you'll, you'll get to see it, at least a couple of three different uh, sequences. 
I want, I want to thank Kip for how positively he's describing all of this because on the night that we all stood there with the small example of it and said, what if the whole place did this? I could, I could see Kip's head just go. <laughs> so I appreciate his enthusiasm. No, actually, he loves what he does. And, and I think, I could be wrong, but I believe we have a teaser trailer of what to maybe expect this year. give you less time. No, no, okay, never mind. Just kidding. Just kidding. Okay. Um, and so uh, I want to bring out a, a special guest um, to help Amy with this next section because um, there's been a lot of buzz. I'm sure you guys have heard uh, a lot of buzz about a certain event returning to the Queen Mary this year. So it sounds like you know it's Queen Mary's Dark Harbor that we all love. Um, and there's, we have an exclusive announcement for all of you. So please welcome to the stage the 13th floor director of special projects, Bert Bertolini. Berlino, Berlino. Paisan, Brett. Brett Bertolino, everybody. Oh, it's. Hi, Brett. Welcome back. Thanks. Yes. Um, so how does it feel, Brett, to be producing such an iconic event that people are so excited about as returning to the Queen Mary? Well, I think I can speak for both Amy and myself and say it's super exciting and it's a true honor to work on this project. If you're from Southern California, you know how legendary Dark Harbor is. But it's legendary outside of this market. Both Amy and I are fans of Dark Harbor. When we were producing Halloween events on the East Coast together, we flew across the country on multiple occasions just to see Dark Harbor. And so I feel like our haunt careers are coming full circle when we have this opportunity to bring back such a legendary event that's been dormant for four seasons. I don't think that's something that happens very often. And so it's really a true honor for us to be, you know, participating in this project. And I hear you have some news to share with us today. We do. So who was at the Dark Harbor panel yesterday? <laughs> yesterday we talked about some new mazes. We uh, teased a new maze on the ship called Infirmary. We teased a new maze in the harbor called Breakout. We told you about some new rides. We told you about the secret bar program. We talked about entertainment. And we said that we'd drop another announcement here today. Um, right now. I think, are we gonna show the trailer first? Or? I think the trailer's at the end. Got it. Um, what about the next slide? I think it might Hit be. Hit us with the next slide. Do you guys remember this? So, as Amy and I are producing Dark Harbor, we've spent a lot of time doing research, a lot of time talking to other fans. And we know that one of the things that most resonates with people are the stories of Dark Harbor and the icon characters of Dark Harbor. The chef we found was one of the icon characters that was newer, and we found that the chef actually didn't resonate as much as some of the other characters, some of the other icons that we want to bring back. So I want to go to the next slide. One of the interesting things about producing Dark Harbor this year is four years have passed since the event operated. The Queen Mary was closed for three Halloweens. During that time, nearly all the physical assets from the past events 
We're lost to time. When we started producing this event, we were told that all the mazes on the ship no longer existed, that they were removed when the ship was closed. And then we got a call from Dylan, who uh, runs events on the ship, and he said, I found something. Do you have a moment to come over here? And I said, of course we do. And deep, deep inside the ship, in the very back of the ship, is the feast maze. And somehow, over those four years, because it's so deeply buried in the ship, the maze was still there, intact. It was like stepping back in time. It was so emotional for us because we're fans of Dark Harbor. You can even see some of the pictures up here from the last night of 2019, the thank you message to the feast staff in the feast break room. So it was such an eerie, creepy experience, but also so exciting. And then we had the parallel kind of thought, well, okay, Feast has an icon character that probably resonated least with the fans. So it was kind of a win, but also a loss. Um, we've been telling our fans that we're gonna honor the history, the legacy, and the stories of Dark Harbor. In some of the mazes this year, we're telling completely new stories, continuing it. In some of the mazes, we're continuing the existing stories of the past and telling what happens next in those stories. With Feast, we decided to go in a different direction. Amy, you want to tell them where we landed? Yes, we decided to go back in time. So if you would think of Dark Harbor as a film series, we wrote a prequel. Meet our young, ambitious, handsome butcher with his eyes on the role of head chef on a luxury cruise liner. After chopping up meat for years on the ship, he grew resentful towards the first class passengers, ungrateful for his meticulous cuts of meat, fish, poultry, and beef. He grew frustrated and he started to take things into his own hands. He thought, maybe I need some type of special ingredient. So this butcher waited until it was late at night when people were leaving the dining room, a little tipsy from a little too much champagne. He lurked in the halls of the Queen Mary and jumped out and nabbed first class passengers, needle to the neck, sedating them and dragged him back to his butcher block. All of a sudden, everyone on the ship started saying, yum, this food tastes delicious. What is so good? What are these secret recipes? People started going crazy. I need the name of the chef. Oh, it's not the chef, it's a butcher. What is this meat? It's so good. He started growing, you know, his pride. He said, oh yes, I'm the best butcher. This is, and the chef was getting jealous and his coworkers were getting jealous. When he thought, I'll take care of my competition. Took them down too. They became part of the feast as well. But soon, all this went to his head, and he got hungry and started eating his own spoils. He needs more meat. He's searching for it. He is looking for you. Everyone who comes into this attraction this year could be end up on the table. Of course, as he became more and more distressed, he eventually became who you recognize from the past as the chef. But we want you to step back in time with us to follow the story of the young, ambitious butcher rising the ranks. This year, the prequel story of Feast at Dark Harbor. Anybody hungry? <laughs> well, thank you so much, Brett Bertolino, everybody, for coming out and sharing that with us. Can't wait to we'll see, see you. We'll see you all this fall at Queen Mary's Dark Harbor. Thank yes, you. Thank you, Brett. So now we have to go to a place we all know and love, a little town known as Midnight Falls. <laughs>
Haunted Hayride. And, uh, and Melissa, clearly it's become such a beloved event. Um, can you just give us a little bit of a background on the event and, and its process of, of like evolution over the years? For sure. So uh, the, the LA Haunted Hayride's evolution is vast, right? And, and very consistent. Um, I was actually talking to Dave Markland right before we walked out here. Who knows how many years we've done the, the Hayride? Take a guess. 15, 20, 25. Do I look old enough to have created this 25 years ago? No. Eight years. 16. So this is year 16, right? Wow. So Woo! Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Thank you for everybody who's come over in the past 16 years. Who, who has been to the LA Haunted Hayride? Hell yeah! That's what I'm talking about. Thank you. Chris also says thank you. So... The, Dave Marklin and I, right before we came out here, were talking in 2009, which is the year we started, there were only three other things here. There was Queen Mary, there was um, uh, Universal, and Knots, and that was it. <clears throat> that was it. So when you look, when we think evolution, and we look at then and now, I mean, the industry as a whole has evolved, LA and Halloween has evolved, but for you know the LA Haunted Hayride, we, we started as, as a, a, an attraction that put environment first, right? Like the entire, the entire like cerebral like motivation for this was we wanted to take people who lived in Los Angeles and were always on concrete and in the city and in traffic and could barely breathe and who knows what our lungs look like, but we were gonna stick them in the woods at night because that had never happened, right? We were only in amusement parks and we were, we were in environments with mazes, um, you know, that, that we would walk from one maze to the next and in between those two mazes, we weren't always still in the experience. We'd be plucked out of that experience sometimes by you know, looking at like pastel colors or cartoons. Or we, we, would, we would be taken out of the experience. But this was, you know, I think the first time we just kept people in this, the experience in a cerebral way, like kind of like shoved their head under, so to speak. But since then, I think the Hayride has been on a constant evolution of changing every year. Um, I think most people know that in 2013, it went on, we went on Shark Tank and we got the largest deal in the history of the show from Mark Cuban. That started a motor um, for the LA Haunted Hayride that has just never stopped. So I think, you know, that, that immersive experience, that narrative, that narrative piece has always played a big role in, um, in each year of the LA Haunted Hayride now with the characters that are out there right now. I think a lot of you have probably met them, talked to them, had conversations with them, spent nights with them, right? And you're seeing, you're seeing them again tonight, and it's like, you know, Herschel's an old friend that you, like, had a hot cocoa with in October. So I, I think that's the special part of the Hayride, because even today, 16 years later, there is nothing in L.A. that makes you feel like you're not in L.A., like the L.A. Haunted Hayride does. That is perfect. That is exactly what I was going to say. You feel transported in the town of LA. Um, and can you tell us a little bit more, uh, more about what mazes we can expect this year? Yeah, we've got, um, as last year, most of you, well, whoever went last year, we put in Hillbilly Halloween last year. That was a brand new maze. Uh, we're very excited about that. That will be back this year with some tweaks. Oh, Trick or Treat, which has been a perennial maze, desperately needed some updating. And I'm glad to say that about 80% of that has been completely transformed and redone this year with the doorbells back where they belong. Yeah. And then we got a really big update for Midnight Mortuary, but I'm gonna give that back. So we're doing something for the first time at the LA Haunted Hayride we've never done. And um, that is we're partnering with somebody that you may or may not know who's kind of a Halloween aspiring queen of Halloween maybe in, in LA, um, nationally actually. She wants the queen of Halloween title nationally. So we're gonna bring her to the LA Haunted Hayride this year and let her try to earn that crown. Let's give you a hint. Did you bring them a gift? I did. It was, did. It, what was it? Me. I'm looking at a thousand versions of myself. And we're all fine. It's phenomenal. Grammy nominated. 
decorated musician, author, actor, and fashion icon. Janelle Monet. Janelle Monet. Janelle Monet. I'm like in the most I don't have to prove anything space that I've ever been in in my life. So with you in person. I am in Europe on tour. And as you know, like I know, Halloween is the only season that matters, right? <laughs> so I'm so proud to announce that I will have my very own attraction at the iconic LA Haunted Hayride. And it's called the Monet Manor. Yes, we will be there all season long. So join me as we transform a haunted wonderland blending eerie elegance with futuristic frights and more. I am dying for all of you to come. Will you please join me? That's if you're brave enough and bold enough to enter Monet Manor. I may or may not be one of the characters in the Monet Manor. That's for you to find out, so stay tuned for more surprises and I look forward to hopefully seeing all of you. Cheers. Woo! Wow! I'm so excited! Monet Manor, everybody. I could, wow. I mean, as if, as if the hayride could not get any, any better. Guys, this is exciting. And I, I'm sorry, I thought she said she may or may not be a character. Did I hear that right? I, I mean, she's very creatively involved in this, so it will not surprise us if she pops in a lot. <laughs> I mean, oh man, I'm so excited. I got chills, I got like good chills on that one. Um, and so, but now uh, we do have to talk about uh, the event's namesake. So can you tell us, uh, Greg, I believe, what's going on with the hair ride this year? Absolutely. So before I do that, how many went last year and experienced the new Hayride Wagons? And tell me. Okay, that's the response we wanted because we didn't enjoy sitting on our butts on the, on the wagons either. So the new wagons, I think, made a gigantic difference. So as we do every year, we try to at least change at least three scenes on the Hayride, which we'll be doing, and then tweaking the rest. We've, the last few years, we've been focused very much on figuring out how to reach out and touch customers in a wagon that are 15 feet from the seat. And that's always been the hardest part, right? So every year, how many people enjoyed the beach balls last year? As silly as that same. Okay. So every year we're trying to come up with some new way to interact directly with the customers. And we've got some surprises for you in store this year on, on the Hayride. And um, uh, that's very exciting. I like the beach balls. I like them. And I'm very. I think everyone is very much looking forward to the new the new updates. He played with the beach balls more than the, the actors <laughs> did. <but. laughs> and <laughs> um, what else is new this year? I hear there's a couple other little new things. A little a couple yeah, little. So, so again, like last year, we we added axe throwing and and uh, zombie splat, and every and they sold out every single night. And what we heard from a lot of customers is. We love the mazes, we love the hayride, we want more things to do while we're out here. So this year we're adding the mini escape games. So. We're adding some new drink options. So, you know, last year if you wanted a drink, you had to stand in line with a food vendor and wait to get a drink. We're actually putting in dedicated drink stands this year. So, so we, we do listen, I promise you we do listen, because we had to stand in there some same lines to get a drink. So, so, um, and maybe most importantly, how many years have we teased you with a merry-go-round? Now, you're going to get to ride it this year. And, uh, I believe uh, there's one more video of something else that's new that is coming. And I think we'll show you now. She speaks to the dead. Madam Aurora, the world-famous spiritual medium, is here tonight on our stage. People have traveled from around the world to witness her power as she contacts the spirits of the dead. 
you too can receive a message from the other side. Look, she's lighting her candles now. Hurry, you don't want to miss the experience of a lifetime. She's performing live right inside. Very good into that video. <laughs> Mysterious. Ooh, I, so what is this? I, I love a seance. I don't know about you guys. I love a seance. Can you tell us a little bit about what this experience will be like? Absolutely. I, we're doing a lot of cool things this year, including Monet Manor, but this is the one that I'm excited about. This is our first theatrical experience. You're going to sit down and actually experience, let's just say a seance that went wrong. Um, so I'm going to actually let Polly talk about a little bit of what the Kip. Kip. I think. Kip. Kip. He we're we're, we're going to keep working on it. Polly is what he, he forgets. As the day gets later, his mind wanders. Uh, yeah, so um, with uh, Madame Aurora's Seance Theater, we really want to create um, a unique experience at, at the Hayride that we just uh, haven't offered before. So. This year, guests will be able to enter the tent uh, and meet Madame Aurora for themselves. She's a world-famous uh, psychic medium who promises us a, an evening we won't forget as she conjures spirits of the dead that uh, we at least hope will be friendly. Um, the experience will really combine uh, theatrical elements with uh, some cutting edge audio, lighting, and tactile effects to really create sort of an immersive uh, experience for our guests at Hayride this year. I think uh, hopefully it's something that they, they won't soon forget. We're, we're very excited about it. Think, think 4D scary. So that's the best way to put this. So. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I'm okay if the ghosts aren't friendly. I'm okay if they want to scare us a little bit. And I'm really, really looking forward to this. This looks fantastic. It sounds like it's going to be a jam-packed season this year at Hayride, which everyone loves so much. So let's give it up for the Hayride and all the exciting things. I cannot wait. And, um... I did promise you a surprise, and uh, I would like to reveal to you that everyone today is going home, or going, going home, like a, you get a, you get a, stay on, you get a, stay on. Everyone here is going to receive a free ticket to the Magic of the Jack-O-Lanterns and the Los Angeles Haunted Hayride. So, all you have to do is check out the screen. Um, for instructions on how to redeem uh, your tickets. Um, and make sure you take advantage of that because there's so much, uh, so much that we love, so much of, of, of things that we return for every year, but so many new exciting things. I don't know about you guys, it sounds like every single event is, I'm gonna go ahead and say it, I'm gonna call it early, it is gonna top itself as it does every single year and that's why we all love it so much and all the events you guys put on. So thank you so much. Um, Chris, John, uh, Brett, Amy, I think, wait, is that, is it, I wanna make sure everyone sees the screen. We all know what we have to do. On, okay, we got it, okay. Um, and uh, Chris, John, Amy, Brett, um, thank you all for just coming in and for sharing all this stuff with the crowd, being the first to hear about it, getting us all psyched up and hoping it was Halloween tomorrow. And uh, thank you. This is the 13th Floor Entertainment Group, as you know and love. Don't forget to text in and get your free tickets because you don't want to miss out on that. And I will be seeing you guys there because I'm very, very, very excited.